Hi, my name's Rich Harrington. I'm the publisher of Photofocus.com, and today we're taking a boot camp look at Aurora HDR 2019. We're going to give you a quick start on how to get the most out of this application using three different types of images. Aurora HDR can be used as a standalone image editor, as a plugin, or as an extension. So you can use it with tools like Photos for Mac, Aperture, Lightroom, and Photoshop. But let's use it as a standalone today. I'm going to start by choosing Open Image. And in this case, let's select an image here that is a long exposure. In this case, I was visiting the beach in Nantucket, and I let the camera take a slow exposure of the water and the sky. I'm going to click Create HDR Image and allow the Quantum HDR engine to analyze the raw photo. Even with a non-bracketed photo, Aurora HDR can go into the RAW file and find an extensive amount of detail. There we go. And as you can see, it's done a great job of finding all the details in the photo. There's the original, and there's the optimized version, bringing out the perfect exposure in each zone. If we open up the Looks browser here, you'll see that there's an extensive collection of looks that come with the product. And these looks really help you unlock the types of images that you want. For example, if I choose Landscape, I'm going to see a whole series of landscape presets. Let's try Realistic Landscape. And I like that. That works well. But if I want to back it off with a single slider, I can blend it to take advantage of the preset. I also might decide to refine things a little bit. For example, coming down to the adjustable gradient here, I can click Set Orientation and place that exactly on the horizon line as needed to make a nice smooth transition. And this allows me to adjust the top and the bottom separately to get the type of blend or transition that we want for the photo. Let's make that sky a little bit more vibrant and just a tad cooler at the top. I can now close that, take a look at my image. There's also a new control called Smart Structure. So if we go down here to the HDR Enhance, you'll see Smart Structure. And this does a great job of allowing you to bring out detail and depth in the image without having to worry about adding noise or clipping things. So now, with no extra artifacts, I'm able to just really bring out the clouds there in the sky. If we look at the before and after, it's really quite impressive how much detail can come out. And if needed, we can take advantage of tools like HSL to quickly target specific areas. For example, pulling up or down the saturation of the orange. Maybe I want to make the blue in the sky just a little more pronounced. Or perhaps shift the color of aqua and blue just to get the right balance there in the sky for the correct shade here. And you see, these are very powerful, easy to use adjustments so you can dial in the exact look that you want for your image. All right, I like that. Let's try another example. I'm going to click open here and just open another single image. In this case, it is an environmental portrait from my friend Robert Vanelli. And a lot of folks don't think of HDR for use in portraiture. But in this case, even though it's a single exposure, the Quantum HDR engine can go in and truly unlock a lot of depth and detail. And this will do a great job of bringing things out. Now, out of the gate, as you look at this, it might look a little too detailed. And that's because HDR is often fine-tuned for things like architecture and landscapes. But Aurora HDR is so flexible that we can preserve the details that we want here in the image and still keep a natural-looking portrait. Let's take a look here under HDR Enhance. And by using microstructure, I can actually go to a smaller amount here. And you see that some of the depth and detail in the skin is now pushed back to that nice, dreamy, smooth state. That looks great. Coming up under color, we can take advantage of vibrance and saturation. So keep nice, rich, vibrant skin tones, but tone down the rest of the image a little bit and put a little color contrast in for some depth and detail. Now we have nice, natural looking skin, but rich colors all around. Under HDR Basic, the Smart Tone feature is a wonderful way to balance out the tonality of the image. 
and you see it really lets you refine where the tones are spread around the middle to get the perfect exposure. I really like that. Now let's go ahead and just finish this off with a few things. Taking advantage of glow, we can get a nice soft feel to the image and this allows me to do really smooth bright highlights which I like. It gives it that feeling of being under the natural lit sun. That's great. And taking advantage of HSL, it's very easy to target areas. For example, let's tone down the green a little bit so it's a little darker and just a tad less saturated. Now, adding a vignette, we can easily draw the viewer's eye into our subject. Let's place that right over her face and we'll knock this down really far. And using the roundness slider here, we can adjust the shape and the feather and then back that off so it's a little more subtle. Now, as you can see, that gentle vignette just pulls you right into the subject, which works incredibly well. Now, one of the things that I really like about Aurora is that it does support layers. So if you decide you'd like to, you can add a new image or a texture layer or an adjustment layer. For example, let's add a radial mask here and draw right over our subject's face. We'll place that there and using the mask controls, I can easily see where we're going to adjust the image. And this makes it simple to refine. There we go. So I've decided to mask out the area of her face and I'll click done. Now, if we take a look at some of these other controls, it's very easy to see that we can further refine the area around our subject. So let's pull the smart tone down just a little bit and the contrast up for the field. And using our HDR Enhance, I'm going to put a little bit of smart structure and clarity there into the surrounding fauna. And that just really brings it out while completely leaving her facial features alone so that we're only enhancing the area that surrounds her. Now, if you need to, you'll find complete cropping controls and you can deliver any aspect ratio that you need to for your image and common sizes like Facebook or Facebook cover. And right under our export menu, you'll see the ability to export or send other applications and complete control with the ability to write lots of professional formats like TIFF and Photoshop, including support for 16-bit files and professional color spaces like Adobe RGB and Pro Photo RGB. All right, if we take a look at the before and after, you see that just an incredible amount of detail has been brought out, and I love that her eyes that were sunken in the shadows are now cleanly lifted, and the surrounding area of the portrait really frames it quite nicely. All right, let's move on to our traditional example of a bracketed HDR photo, one where you use multiple shots. From the open dialog, just select multiple exposures. This will read in all of the photos into your system. In this case, you see our base exposure and a little bit more lifted up. Now, if you shot from handheld, you might choose auto alignment. I was on a tripod though, so I'm not too worried. You'll also find the ability to remove color, noise, and the ability to remove ghost if you had things that might be moving in the photo. In this case, we didn't, but a blowing tree branch or moving waves. I'll click Create HDR to merge the five exposures into one. The Quantum HDR engine is going to look at the best part of each image, find those details, and then use artificial intelligence to optimize them and intelligently mask and blend them together into a new image that's a fantastic starting point. There we go. And we have a very realistic image to start with that brings out the best areas of exposure. Now, on its own, it's a little flat, and this is by design so that you just have something that's optimized and exposed correctly. But taking advantage of our looks, we can quickly dial in different options in just a click. I'm going to go to the dramatic category here, and I see a lot of different choices. Clicking on each will apply the new look very quickly, and you see that it allows you to stylize the image, bringing out the amount of detail and depth that you want. I like this here, the sleepy drama. It feels close to where I'd like it to, but there's a few things that I need to enhance about this image. Now, let's go ahead and close the preset panel there, the looks, 
and just optimize things. Using HDR Basic, I'm gonna use a little bit of Smart Tone to lift up that image. That looks good. And we'll also set a custom white balance based upon the lighting conditions. That helped a lot. Under Color, I really like the Color Contrast section, which makes it easy to bring out details. And using HDR Enhance, we can decide how much depth we want in the different sections. Things like Clarity and Smart Structure. And you notice that even as we start to crank these things up, we avoid heavy halos or glowing edges. Now, you might not even need it, but there are complete controls over noise. And we have a wonderful new option here called Lookup Table Mapping. This allows you to choose from different built-in presets or load them. And Lookup Tables make it very simple to stylize the color in the image. Here, this preset is using one called Fall, and you see it optimizes the colors, bringing out those autumn tones there in the vegetation, which I really like. Using Image Radiance here, I can also adjust the amount of glow and where that falls. And the ability to control depth and details, as well as things like Tone Curve. I really like this. I just feel the red's a little too strong, so I'm going to actually back off the saturation there in the red, so it's not so intense and refine its lightness there. A little darker actually feels better. And I can even roll the color of the red until it feels like it's the right shade for the scene. That actually looks a lot better to me. While we're at it, let's tone down the greens a little bit and darken those so the vegetation is not so pronounced as it creates a little bit of a darker ring leading up to the subject. I like that. Let's take advantage here of the adjustable gradient, and this makes it simple to set our horizon line. If we need to, we can rotate that even to adjust for any angles in the scene. I'll create a nice blend. And what I'm gonna do here is just actually on the bottom, darken the foreground a little bit to create a ramping effect as it goes into our subject. And you'll find complete control over highlights and shadows so you can really refine that adjustment and get exactly what you want. You also, of course, have the ability to dodge and burn to paint in specific details. So if I'd like to, I can choose to dodge here and lighten the area. Let's just get a smaller brush. And I'll paint in a little bit of lightness here to lift up the lighthouse slightly. There we go. And I like that. It's brightened it up and makes it pop a little bit and I can simply refine that there using the amount slider to get the exact look that we want. If I need to, I can even erase if we got a little too much. So right there on the edge, I can just back that off for the left edge and it blends nicely. Let's click done. Now, this is looking really good, except I noticed two things that I'm not crazy about. I got a little bit of dust. It was a really windy day out there. The grass was blowing around, dust was blowing around. And I think I did a lens change in the field and I got a little bit of specs there, but no big deal. You have the ability to quickly invoke plugins. Now you'll see that a lot of other plugins show up from other manufacturers, but there are two plugins that are available from Skylum. Luminar is a full featured editor designed for traditional images, but it has a great ability to apply erasing or healing. So I'm just gonna send this over to Luminar where I can quickly brush out those spots. Now, over in Luminar, I could take advantage of all sorts of other options. You'll find a wealth of available looks that you could apply, as well as extras that you can download for creative outputs. But I'm just gonna take advantage here of the Erase tool. This makes it super easy to get rid of anything that you want to in the shot. For example, let's just brush over this little zone here and here, that looks good. And I see a little bit of rocks down here that I find just distracting at the edges. That looks great. And good. I'll click Erase, and it intelligently analyzes the image and removes those blemishes or spots. And they're gone. Now it's simple. I'll just click Done, and it stores those changes. And when we click Apply, the image is automatically returned back to Aurora. So if you've got any of the Skylum tools installed, they work great together.
there it is. You see the blemishes are gone. Now, additionally, if you need to, you can take advantage of other plugins, including Photo Lemur for automatic image enhancement, and perhaps tools from other manufacturers that work under the plugins menu. You'll find a list of supported plugins over on the Skylum website. All right, I really like how this has been finished up, and I'm gonna to choose to save this file. What's great is when you save the image, it actually captures everything, including the editing history, making a cross-platform file, and it will store all of the original resources inside. This means that if you ever need to redevelop the raw files, the DNGs, the TIFFs, the JPEGs, whatever you use to make the HDR image are automatically backed up with the project file. And as you learned before, you have the ability to export a wide range of formats by just choosing export to image and you can resize, sharpen, and select the exact output that you need. All right, I hope you enjoyed this bootcamp look at Aurora HDR. I invite you to head on over to photofocus.com. You'll find reviews and additional tutorials to help you out. And for those of you that purchase the pre-order or the software through our website, you'll find a collection of bonus items. This will include an additional longer video, some looks that you can apply, some additional LUTs that you could apply for creative color grading, and some high resolution textures that you can overlay on your photo. So be sure to pick that up. Just visit photofocus.com to get that bonus pack and take advantage of some of our wealth of educational articles. My name's Rich Harrington. Thanks for joining me.